Hi, this is Kim Shanley for Tennis Reach. Welcome to part five of our ongoing series, Zombies and Athletes of God. In part four, we discussed about how a bad paradigm can really stop all progress, whether it's in flying or whether it's in tennis. Today, I want to talk about what I call the ripple of power paradigm. The paradigm I think is best applied when we're talking about our power strokes in tennis. But before we do that, I want to refer back to the paradigm that most coaches use when they're talking about how energy and power flows in the human body. And it's something they call the kinetic chain, which is sort of a machine analogy of how the body works. The kinetic chain may sound scientific, but it's just a metaphor for trying to describe this process of energy flow inside the body, which we can't see or measure directly, except for the outcome and the force of our shot. But kinetic chain suggests a simple linear power mechanical process, like the chain moving one way around a gear or a conveyor belt carrying a load from one point to another at a uniform speed. There are several flaws with the kinetic chain idea, but I just want to focus on one, which is the overall basic analogy to how a machine works comparing it to how the body works. If we're pedaling a bicycle and moving a metal kinetic chain around a gear on our bike, the way to get the bike to travel faster is to pedal harder, more forcefully. And this works fairly well on a mechanical device like a bike. But a model that encourages us just to apply more force to an action is not a good model for athletic movements. That's the problem I have with the kinetic chain. For example, in tennis, just swinging harder uh, is not the solution to more force. Rather, we have to look, look at a sequential building of energy in our body and a sequential actions of various parts of our body. So this kinetic chain, which encourages us to apply force and more force in a uniform way, really is counterproductive to the way we truly produce energy in our body and power. We saw this with Dinara Safina, where her serve basically broke down to an arm serve through contact and the rest of her body power was cut off. Yes, she could move her arm very fast through the contact zone and actually create a very fast hit, but it did not have the proper spin and net clearance that we want on a serve. So you could say that Safina's serve was a case of applying too much force, too much power just with the arm and the hand, and not enough coordination with the entire body like we saw with Roger Federer's serve. I believe the ripple of power paradigm has all these advantages over the kinetic chain model. Ripple of power conveys the major source of power, the legs, hips, and pelvis. Ripple of power also better describes how power in the human body is developed in sequential actions of parts of the body and the eventual convergence of multiple sources and streams of energy in a wave-like action. Finally, ripple of power describes how the big muscles of the body provide most of the power, enabling the hands to deliver either incredible power or a subtle touch. In the photo on the left, we see the classic karate man about to break some bricks the chop of his hand. But this tremendous power, which is incredible in itself, isn't just a blunt mechanical blow. The karate master can vary what kind of power is transmitted in this strike. If you Google breaking the bottom brick on YouTube, you'll see a karate master break not the top brick in his strike, but just the bottom brick and leave the top brick intact. So the human body can manipulate its incredible power in all sorts of ways, far beyond what a machine can do. On the other hand, we see the incredible touch the body can demonstrate. Here with the Roger Federer forehand volley. No machine, no mechanical kinetic chain can explain both the power and variety of how energy and power are controlled by the human body. In terms of human movement, the best engineers have done to copy us is to build a robot that moves around as clumsily as a three-year-old baby. In other words, while engineers may have built a computer to beat the best chess player in a game of chess, they will never build a machine that plays basketball as well as Steph Curry or tennis as well as Roger Federer. 
We'll look at these themes in the next videos. So whether your goal is just to be good or to go from good to great, I think you'll find them very valuable in your search.